I am going to prove to you that Trevor Jacob indeed did have an engine out over the mountains whenever he crashed, or rather whenever he jumped out of his plane and the plane crashed. So I'll get right into that. I'm gonna cover some uh, information about his airplane and uh, show you how he did in fact run out of gas. That is the number one uh, reason for engine outs in general aviation. And that was definitely the reason for his engine out in this case. Now, uh, this old Taylor craft, okay, um, it ran off of a four uh, cylinder engine and it was produced as a uh, hand prop. So there was no starter. Um, while there are some Taylor craft uh, that people outfitted with electrical systems, um, which is also a reason why he couldn't make emergency calls. There was no electrical system in this airplane uh, as is common and especially for one that's trashed out like that one was, um, it wouldn't have been outfitted or maintained at the level to have uh, an electrical system added to it and therefore the starter. Also, there are multiple fuel tanks. Uh, so they start out with a nine gallon tank up front uh, in the front of the fuselage. That's what I'm going to say this one had. Some later came with a uh, 12 gallon and then a six gallon in the right wing. So the six gallon tank in the right wing is uh, would have a flexible hose to it with a valve at that wing. So that um, floppy hose job that you see in the cabin there with the valve, that is to that right wing fuel uh, tank. And that tells you there is no tank or no active fuel in that tank, right? Once you had burned, and this was the procedure, once you had burned at least half the fuel in the main fuselage tank, which f gravity fed the carburetor, you would turn that valve and allow that six gallons to drain into that front tank. That was the procedure uh, per the POH, and I'll uh, tag that in the link below um, in the comment section. But so that tells us that he only had that front tank. Maximum potential capacity of 12 gallons. Uh, he would have only had the nine gallon tank if I'm assessing that airplane properly. Now, uh, and that's what they were originally produced with. So that gives you uh, about a 200 mile range, nautical mile maximum range. It was a hundred and let's see, from where he was going to Lompoc uh, to Kilo Mike Mike Hotel, which would be uh, the Mammoth Yosemite Airport there. It's a hundred 94 nautical miles so it at an altitude like he had he would have never been able to make it anyway but let me show you without that extra wing tank in there let's figure a gallon to start up taxi out and take off okay another three gallons for the climb so he could have maintained a 500 foot per minute climb slightly more aggressive initially and as he gained altitude quite a bit less so i'm being a little bit um I'm, I'm giving a lot of credit to the airplane there uh, and, and we'll give it about three gallons for the climb. Then in this uh, Google Earth here that I'm going to pull up, um, you can see in the Google Earth here, uh, this track. Now I know he went over Mission Hills, which is right here. And then let's just give him the benefit of the doubt, say he went straight out. Now I could tell in his video, whenever he was leaving the valley and going to the mountains, he was actually leaving a valley and he had altitude. So this is the closest that I could give him uh, this way. He was probably more this way and he went flying uh, to the specific area. So he feigned like he was actually on the trip, okay? And I think that one of his purposes for that was so that his crash site wouldn't be so easily found because I actually believe that he flew up over this way and then flew down to a completely different area so that you wouldn't even uh, figure it. Now, this route 63.37 nautical miles, burn about five gallons an hour. Um, that's, a, that's an hour trip. Um, and so there we have it, that's nine gallons. And nine gallons is what he had in his airplane. That's exactly what happened. He actually did have an engine out. Uh, there was no, if you look at the way that engine was crammed in, um, to the rest of the plane in that cockpit, most definitely he had um, crumpled the fuel tank and there would have been at the minimum uh, fumes, gas, something like that. Kind of funny on one of the, the pilot uh, pages, you know, for these airplanes, they had an airplane, one of these sitting in a tree uh, where a guy had landed in the woods, 
um, and literally it was some aspens and this wing had an aspen bit into it and this one into some treetops and the plane was sitting there. Said this plane can, the quotes on it was, this plane can land about anywhere. Kind of funny, but the reality of this is, is that this airplane has a 33 knot stall speed. Typically you would do your final approach at about 50. That is not moving at all. And uh, you know, it could be argued that you could jump out at 33 knots, uh, not high off the ground, right? Uh, and survive potentially better than a crash. Uh, so that's all out there. The, the engine did quit. Uh, he could have safely landed in that area, stole or not, at 33 knots. Um, but put all of that out of it. Uh, we do know that he actually did have an engine out that wasn't faked. And I am going to say that it was an intentional engine out. So he intentionally ran out of fuel, got to the area. At about 10,000 feet is what I'm giving him there based on uh, my experience looking at those mountains saying he's 5,000 foot over the top of those mountains at least, and those mountains are uh, about 4,500 foot. So there you have it. I uh, hope that shed some new light, and let me see where y'all take it from here. Bye. Yep, that's me, Nathaniel Schultz, and this is my YouTube channel. I share a lot of my cross-country adventures, try to be informative, and just share a lot of the fun that I have. I work hard, and I play hard and hope that this channel inspires you to do the same.